Hi everyone, uh, my name is Vinod Sanadia and I work as a marketing manager for Open Excel Techno Labs. I bring with me six years of experience of marketing and research in information technology. Here I represent Open Excel Techno Labs. Uh, we are a focused company for mobile app development. Till date, we have designed and developed more than 700 mobile apps. We are pleased that you are taking time out of your busy day to know more about Android monetization, marketing, and development. This webinar is a part of our Revolution webinar series. Today we will discuss about the current market trends for Android apps in compare to iOS. We will also talk about some insights for Android app development, marketing and monetization. Please feel free to put your questions anytime using the tab at the right side of your screen. We will try to answer as many of your questions as possible at the end of the presentation. We will also send everyone an email with a link to the recording and the presentation slides in a week or two. The presentation will be carried on by me and my colleague Mr. Avik Bhattacharya. Avik is a project manager and have more than six years of experience in Android app development and project management. Please allow me a minute to introduce OpenXL Technolabs. OpenXL Technolabs is an ISO 9000-2008 certified company located in India and USA. We are a team of enthusiastic designers, developers and managers exceeding the strength of 200. We have a strong hold in mobile app development, game development, web development, e-commerce development and enterprise systems. Till date, we have developed more than 700 mobile applications. We have delivered our quality solutions across the globe. Let us discuss some statistics about market trends, size and revenue sharing. The graph shows the revenue of iOS and Google Play from December 2012 to April 2013. The Apple App Store was still the larger market compared to Google Play in April 2013 in terms of total revenue. While only 19% of the combined revenue came from Google Play in November 2012. This share went up by 8 percentage points to 27% in April 2013. So you can see that Google Play is making a stagnant and a slow growth. In this slide, we can get the idea that Google Play's piece of the pie has increased significantly over the last uh, 6 months. Means Google Play's market share is making a notable growth in terms of revenue. You can see that in March 2013, the market share of iOS was 75% and the market share of Google Play was 25%. But if you see the data of August 2013, you will find that the market share of uh, iOS uh, would be 65% and the market share of Google Play is 35%. So Google Play is making a significant growth. The graph includes the revenue of both Apple App Store and Google Play. Here we can identify that uh, the major chunk of the revenue is coming from United States, Japan, Korea and United Kingdom. Revenue distribution by platform. Here we can see uh, the revenue distribution by various platforms and the Japanese and South Korean markets were the main contributors for the growth in Google Play's revenue share. This graph displays the popularity of each category as proportion of the whole store volume and the major downloads and revenue generation is being done by games. Let us have a quick look on the applications and publishers which has done good job for Google Play. Mobage is a developer that has gained similar revenue numbers in the Apple App Store and Google Play. It has generated $5.1 million in Google Play and $5.6 million in the Apple App Store during April 2013 in the United States. One more interesting fact is Blood Brothers, by, uh, Blood, Blood Brothers app by Mobe generated more revenue in Google Play than in the Apple App Store in the United States. Uh, the second app is, uh, is uh, by Square Enix Revenues. The app name is Final Fantasy 3. 
and you see that 73% of Final Fantasy III's global total revenue comes from Google Play in April 2013 and it's a paid game on Google Play and the cost of this game is $15.99. Let's have a look on WhatsApp revenues. Although WhatsApp Messenger by WhatsApp INC is a free app in Google Play and a paid app in the Apple App Store, it has still made more money in Google Play in three large European countries like Germany, Italy and Spain. Here are top 5 apps on Google Play Store in month of August 2013. As we can see, Candy Crush Saga by King.com King is leading the market. As we have seen a significant amount of statistics and tried to put some data in favor of Android, now we will discuss that what should be the business model for mobile applications. So here is a big question. Are we making an app or we are making a business? So, if we think to make a business, there should be three parameters. First is a good app, second is a user and third is monetization. And combination of these three will be take you to a, a business, a profitable business. Let's discuss one by one. Product means a good app. A good app means an app which solves users needs. When you have a good app, good mobile app, you need uh, users to use it. So the marketing comes into the picture and we cannot ignore the marketing efforts to create our user base. After creating a user base, we must be having a monetization plan for revenue generation. So these are three basic parameters to create a successful business model. Uh, now I will hand over the uh, presentation to Avik for discussion about the app development. Avik, please take. Thanks for the introduction, Vinod. Hello, everyone. This is Avik Bhattacharya, and I would be taking you through the next set of slides. Well, I have an interesting title to share with you near. Let me give you certain convincing reasons to support my title that reads why one should be going with android or a slow paced consistent turtle and why not the rabbit so based on my this title i'll explain you with few of the slides to support my first statement android is an open source operating system with enormous developer support being an open source operating system it lets the developer community to contribute in its improvisation. Google formed Open Handset Alliance with the goal of contributing to Android development. Android itself is built to let developers create compelling mobile applications that can take full advantage of all a handset has to offer. So if you have an app concept in mind where iOS is putting its hands up because of its OS specific restrictions you know then Android can be the right option for you to start with so coming to the next point I believe Android has reached the masses the most obvious reason for Android's more recent dominance in the mobile market is because Android devices are available to a large number of people Apple's high price point keeps them out of reach for many consumers especially when it comes to emerging markets. Apple is maintaining a strong market share in US, Japan, Europe, etc. But it's lagging significantly behind other manufacturers in other markets. So to support my third statement, I believe Android's hardware manufacturers are free to keep top notch device specifications. Thus, a good hardware specification makes go for a performing application. If your application demands processing power, then you shouldn't be reluctant to cho choose Android. Coming to the fourth point, being an open source o Android OS has encouraged third-party equipment manufacturers 
to offer stunning consumer products which is not just a phone or tablet. Android attracted innovations from original equipment manufacturers or which we also known as OEMs. Such ecosystem has emerged a range of innovative products altogether. Android even has broken into the gaming space with projects like GameStick, Oya, Nvidia Shield. All these devices are an eminent example of utilizing Android in a fairly unique way. These devices offer a handheld gaming platform with all the functional functionality of a full-fledged operating system. These are kickstart projects which are doing really good in the market. So based the best thing in Android's prime computer isn't in this league and this is definitely going to increase the affinity of more and more consumers to the Android ecosystem. iOS is nowhere in the league so Android is going to do a very good job with this kind of principle in mind. Coming to the fifth point, let me take you to the next slide. So fifth point is quick approval time. So Android's ability to get quick app approval while publishing an Android app to Play Store is one of Android's strength. If you have a short timeline for your project and want to quick test an application's response by throwing it to a specific market, then yes, Android should be the best platform for you. It even allows developers to easily respond to consumer demands rather than having to wait ages for authorizations as like in Apple. So if you want to release an application and if you have a very quick turnaround time, then Android is the best platform for you. To support my sixth statement, I believe from the open source development community, Android has benefited a lot and thus emerge skinning your base launchers to its maximum cap capability. If you are willing to be adventurous with your device, then you can cook an innovative Android home screen that can completely redefine how you have seen your device when you bought it. There are some very potential launchers being developed that can change your perspective entirely. One of su such example is our newly created Alias Facebook Home Launcher. This is an innovation from OpenXL Technolabs. If you search it on Google Play Store, you can have a look to it. It's a unique product of its own kind. Now, last but not the least, Google's willingness to experiment with various aspects of its ecosystem will always keep their e technology ahead to their competitors, I believe. This will create grounds to bring up out-of-the-box app concept for app publishers in coming years. So this was all about why I believe Android is very potential for you to begin with. Coming to the next topic, let me help you deciding where to launch first. Say if you are a mobile app entrepreneur, your first big decision is which operating system to develop your application for. Apple's iOS or Google's Android. Interestingly, two combined own more than 90% market share in the smartphone category itself. So, primarily, if you should be knowing what are your current users using, that's the main thing. You should know what your potential customers are all about. Look at your visitor stats and see what portion of your mobile visitors are coming from. Are they from Android or iOS? As you can see in this uh, illustration which I made over here, Android has huge user penetration. So if your app is, say suppose, um, a social networking app that needs good mass of people, so choosing Android is always wise. You must know that a low cost Android device acts as a mass cooler. As you can see in this small pie chart, 70.1% of users in the complete market is using Android and 21% of the users are using iOS and some others like Windows OS, they are near 8.5% of the complete number. Well, let me go to the next slide. 
revenues over visibility uh well how can we forget thinking about revenues while launching the app right so but mostly publishers often ignores visibility of over revenues that's the main thing in fact android offers the most visibility based on market share while apple's daily sales revenue is way high but you need to craft a strategy and choose visibility or revenue the most the more visibility you get the greater your chances of monetization let me give you a small example whatsapp so one of the most famous application we are using right so whatsapp which is the most popular messaging app is available for free for the first year on the android platform to gain massive numbers and was at 0.99 dollars on the ios for the monetization so basically in social networks and social communication uh, in, so in social communication uh, communication tools monetization is a waiting game third point i believe fragmentation now everyone considers fragmentation as the culprit why not to think it in a other way around as you can see in this illustration there are 3997 different android device models in the market that can actually complicate development way more than ios with their mere number of products in the market but primarily if you are convinced with android and want to start with it then selecting the primary screen resolutions and proceeding with it can actually drop down the time and cost to develop a project android has screen resolutions from ldpi to xx hdpi that is a very high resolution device as you can see in galaxy s4 or similar kind of devices in the market as of now but if you know the correct screen resolution that your primary users use then it's a wider it's it's a wiser decision to choose and pay only for the ones which covers the maximum market as you can see in this uh, illustration which i have shared with you uh, gti 9100 that was one samsung galaxy s series of device this was one of the fa famous device in the market and comprises the maximum market share and there are only few devices which are covering the maximum market share so if you choose among them if you choose among the resolutions which is covering the ma maximum market then you can definitely reduce the development cost and time for your project <clears throat> now one important point which is absolutely unignorable you should know the primary location geo location where your app can succeed now say suppose when you know the region where the demand for your application is aggressive then devise a comparison to understand which operating system is mostly being used here so if you are targeting india or china then you should blindly be choosing android over ios so a def a rigorous study will definitely help choose your platform effortlessly let me go to the next topic here it is let's see how to proceed when you have the concept ready first and the foremost thing which you need to do is identify your app type we broadly divided the application categories into three types one is static native apps another one is dynamic native apps and the third one is hybrid native apps so what are they all about static native apps are the applications which are developed with native software development kit but they don't require an internet connection to get running advantages would be they are really fast because they don't need an internet connection and they are most cost effective because you need to write web services to fetch data from server mostly static native apps do not store any data on the server so when there is no data there is no need of any communication or any sort of that stuff Let me share with you some of the disadvantages of static native application. 
If you have an app concept that needs huge bulk of data, then you may not consider static app. This will increase the local database size and it will degrade the performance of the application. Second disadvantage which I feel is, the app is not connected to the server, so it limits customization of your data once it's on store. So say suppose you have a static native application on the Google Play Store and uh, you have not kept the content of the application on server. So this means once the app is on store, you cannot change the content anyway. So that's one big demerit. But that's up to you. If your application do not need such, then you can blindly leave this. You do not need a server to store your data. I've given few examples to make you understand what kind of applications can be a static application. A marketing campaign app or a app locker or a ebook reader or a music player. Mostly marketing campaign apps are applications which do not need your data to be stored on the server. So these kind of applications needn't be dynamic in nature. Coming to the next point. Dynamic native app. Basically these are the applications which are developed with native software development kit but at the same time possesses connectivity to centralized repository from where the data is supposed to get fetched. The stat this uh, specific dynamic native applications need a server where the data has to be stored. I believe the advantages for dynamic apps would be two. First is, it works on the principle of distributed computing where majority of the data will get stored on the server. Hence, it will, it will definitely reduce load at the application's end. Secondly, it ca you can customize the content of the app from the centralized content management system located on the server. So if you are making a uh, dynamic native app, then you have to create a ce central uh, centralized content management system, which we also known as CMS, on the server, which will give you a provision to edit your content, even though the application is on store. Disadvantages you have to place your content on the server. So, if you have to, in, uh, since you have to place the content on the server, so you have to incur expenses of subscribing a server. There are many server providers whom you can choose to provide you a server for a cost. There are some big vendors in the market, service providers in the market, like Amazon or GoDaddy, which provides you a server for a cost. Secondly, I believe, have to compromise on the speed. These are the application types which relies completely on the server. So your app should be, a, should be on a good network coverage zone to benefit from all this. I've given some examples as well. So example would be a product catalog. Say suppose you have a company which has a huge product catalog and uh, you know that your product catalog's details changes quite often. So you, have, you can create a dynamic native app and keep all your content on the server and create a CMS that will give you a provision to edit the product catalog's details anytime even though the application is on store. Second would be a social networking app that requires storing users information on server. Let me go to the next category of app type. These are hybrid apps. Hybrid apps run inside a native container and uses the browser engine to render the HTML and processes the JavaScript locally. A web to native abstraction layer enables access to device capabilities that are not accessible in mobile web applications such as the accelerometer, camera and local storages. I found three advantage for ad hybrid apps. Unlike web applications, a hybrid app can take advantage of device capabilities like as I said geolocations, accelerometer or the camera. You can make a hybrid app to target multiple platforms so it is cross platform it has a cross platform affinity. Can even work in offline mode. Coming to the disadvantages it cannot access all the native APIs of the device and hence it's limited. Unlike native apps, you cannot access all the properties of the device 
or the application programming interfaces while you are making a hybrid app. Although it uses mostly web technologies to perform your application, but you still need knowledge of native coding to access native libraries. And in the end, I believe it compromises on speed and performance since they are not actually native applications. I found two small examples for this. A real estate app or e-commerce application can be a hybrid app. Here you can see one a comparative study that shows where native apps, hybrid apps and mobile web apps stands. As you can see that native apps is completely targeted to a specific platform. Hybrid apps and mobile web apps can be targeted to multiple platforms. But speed wise native apps is uncomparable to hybrid apps or mobile web apps. Even you will have access to application programming interfaces of, of the device more in native apps rather in comparison to hybrid apps and the mobile web apps. So the next, which approach is best? This is the main question you should be having in your mind after all the study I have given till now. Well, the answer is it depends. It depends on your requirement, but knowing the basic advantages and disadvantages of each approaches give you the information you need to make a solid decision. Let me take you to the next topic, which is trending app category. In this informative recent study, we find that entertainment and personalization is one of the most successful category in the Google mar market presently. And to take part in this booming new trend, OpenXL recently ventured making a launcher that is unique in its own kind. So as you can see in this uh, chart, you can find that the most trending category is entertainment, then comes personalization, and then books and reference, and likewise it shows. So as I said in my previous slide, OpenXL recently ventured making a launcher. So let me give you an in-depth study on the launcher. Let me share with you a small case study on Alas Home Facebook launcher. Alias Home features a splendid UI showing all your Facebook feeds right on your home screen. Alias Facebook Home is a social Facebook launcher that takes the user experience to a new heights. It is an initiative to overcome some of the very known drawbacks in Facebook Home app. You must have used Facebook Home app. It is one of the famous and the most talked about application Facebook has created. But Unfortunately, it was not that successful because of several reasons. But Alias Facebook Home Launcher, which we created, was having an outlook that we will overcome all these demerits which Facebook Home app had. Let's have a look to how we executed this concept. As you can look into the flow, there is one flow chart which I have depicted over here. Once the application gets installed and been set as an active home launcher, then it revamps the complete layout of your home screen and puts five workspaces to the home screen. As you can see, there are five provision for five workspaces and workspace three will stay occupied with alias home feeds. But one can simply enjoy all the features of a launcher in other workspaces. So one can even have provision to add app shortcuts, folders, widgets and wallpapers from workspace 1, 2, 4 and 5. 3 will stay always stay occupied for the Alias home Facebook feeds.
The best part is when you log into the app launcher with your Facebook credential, then you can view all your recent feeds and their comments in a user friendly interface. But this complete execution faced a couple of challenges. Let me show you a few of the challenges which we faced. As you can see in this slide, these are the four challenges which we faced while we executed the product. Firstly, creating custom workspaces. Second challenge was dynamically blurring live images which you see in the background of the app application. Thirdly was pagination of Facebook feeds and the fo fourthly it was creation of custom app tray. Let me take you to take you and explain each of the challenges one by one. First, creating custom workspace. I have given one small code snippet over here and uh, basically to add a custom workspace we modified launcher.xml file. Here as you can see five workspace schemes are added in XML file. The red one which you see over here that is extra workspace which was the custom workspace we added and in this extra workspace itself we loaded alias home. Well, it's important to note here that every workspace.java class should extend cell layout.java. If not done, it will throw class cast exception. So you should be careful if you are planning to make similar kind of launcher by yourself. Challenge. The second challenge was like dynamically blurring live images. Again, uh, there is one quote snippet of native coding. So basically in Java, bitmap class has limited functionality to manipulate bitmaps. So using bitmap.java class to make continuous rendering was uh, used to throw out of memory error. Therefore, we use native code of C++ to, to blur the background image. As you can see over here, we kept a small code snippet to make you understand how the native coding of C++ was done to blur the background image. This is uh, our third challenge. So pagination of Facebook feeds. So I have given one link over here of Facebook graph API where you f uh, from where you can have a look into the cursor pagination of graph API. Basically we use cursor pagination in graph API that provided page wise data and we use the same here and fetched feeds accordingly. Fourth was creation of custom app tray. Alias Facebook Home has two embedded app trays. One that shows all the apps and one that shows the frequently used apps. I have given the source code, open source source code of Google uh, which you can refer for this context. So basically how we uh, found a solution for it was like we added a new method in uh, launcher model.java class and to handle in memory state of the launcher and also to update the database state for it we added this method so this was all about the challenges we faced but alias home is under constant upgradation and we considered a couple of changes from the feedbacks in google play store Ultimately, it's the users whom you should be listening to. Uh, now, for the next couple of slides, my fellow friend Vinod will continue. Over to you, Vinod. Uh, thank you, Avik. Uh, it was a very informative session by you. Uh, let us move on for marketing of mobile applications, which has been developed by Avik. So, uh, uh, here are some marketing ways how you can market your applications. The first is competitive research. Carefully research your competitors and target audience at the start of your app marketing campaign. What features do the top selling apps in your category have in common? How do your competitors position themselves in the market and what is their revenue model? So you need to identify your, competi your competitors into the market. 
the second is aso app store optimization uh, we will take this in detail in our next slide the third one in third one is press releases announce the launch of uh, your app with a press release that is carefully structured towards both creating awareness of your app amongst your target audience also ensure that the press release is keyword heavy to improve its search engine visibility the fourth one is integrate social media uh, we will uh, take this in detail in our next slides uh, then is mobile display advertising defined as placing an advert within a variety of mobile media formats including uh, mobile internet games and applications the effectiveness of mobile display advertising varies greatly from uh, from campaign to campaign we will discuss about the different ad networks later in the presentation the last one is burst marketing to skyrocket your app to the top of your app category uh, the app store ranking algorithm dictates that you need to attract as many downloads in the shortest period uh, of time possible so uh, achieve top app store rankings with app store optimization the key component to online success and estimated 60% of downloads come directly from users who discover your app from organic uh, search within the app store so the aso is very very important so how we can do app store optimization so how optimize your app store uh, uh, follow are the processes first is pick your name your name uh, your app name works as some kind of main keyword and has a slight advantage in comparison with standard search keywords publisher's name also plays a role in search results the second one is find your keywords keywords have an important role in your app store optimization strategy a proper use of them can land you a huge amount of search traffic remember keywords are as important as the app itself localize your keywords this part is often being ignored even by bigger publishers which means you have much higher chance to score on local markets it is hard to rank number 1 for fun games in english however for example in spain this is much more easier task of course you need to translate your whole app which is a task you can outsource we will also take a case study on app localization in our next slides design an eye catching icon icon itself has zero effect on search results however its impact on click through rate and install rate is unbelievable many medicore apps uh, receive huge amount of downloads just because of well designed app icon screenshot attractions the very first prerequisite for a great screenshot is logically your app design even if you could seduce people to download your app with highly manipulated screenshots you will probably end up with the low ratings and angry comments so remember well designed apps means beautiful screenshots and more downloads don't hesitate to use as many screenshots as you can apple gives you 5 slots and google 8 the power of great description great app description is like the cover page of your app cv This is the place where you need to encourage your app viewers to download it. Having a demo or a promo video. That's an awesome thing on the Google Play Store. You can add a YouTube video to promote your app. Don't miss out on the opportunity to really show what your app is worth. The last one is getting good reviews. Since ratings are part of the rank and search algorithm, you want to do everything you can to get positive reviews so there should be uh, good reviews for your uh, application after the launch of your application uh, a little more about the google play store rank algorithm uh, just like apples no one knows it but people do try to understand it better here are the main criteria number of ratings how many people have rated and reviewed your app the second one is ratings how high or low Uh, your uh, app ratings are so you need to focus on the ratings of your app amount of downloads how many apps downloads so and the next one is downloads growth the growth of downloads over the last 30 days uninstalls how many people uninstall the app the last one is usage frequency with which your app is used uh, this is reported by some developers so these are the things 
how you, uh, Google will identify and uh, make uh, their rank algorithm. So you should work on these things. Uh, so here is a case study for app localization. The research was done by David Jenner for app localization. This research was done for an iPhone app but significant for all mobile apps. So you can find out from the research that before localization the overall traffic uh, was very low and 76% of traffic from the overall traffic comes from English speaking countries and the downloads were of 3000 only. But when uh, the app was localized, uh, th uh, it was a dramatic change. The, uh, the overall traffic has been increased like anything and only 10% traffic comes from English speaking countries and the downloads were goes to 23,000. So case study outcomes. Uh, Localizing the app helped increase downloads by 767%. So you can see a 7x effect by localizing your app. Localization means what does localization means? It do, uh, localization doesn't mean to localize only your keywords. It also means to localize your app name, localize your screenshots, localize the description of your mobile application, and localization of language strings within the app. Please find the detailed analysis of the research at, at the below link. So uh, let's discuss about the int uh, to integrate social media. Uh, after making a good app, you also need to promote uh, your app a uh, good social media network. So what would be the process uh, to promote your app on social media? First is prepare a strategy for app marketing on social media platforms. Uh, the second is content is king. So you need to choose your content to promote your app on app store. The third one is network with app review sites prior to the launch because if you have a uh, network with app review sites then you can have good app reviews or some uh, you know, description for your apps uh, before the launch and after launch you can put your app reviews uh, with your app so it make uh, the users to download uh, fast download your apps. The fourth one network with other relevant blog online communities like LinkedIn groups it creates a big network and it will market uh, your mobile applications like anything. Uh, nowadays video tutorials are also very influential so you should also make some video tutorials to promote your app on social media. Uh, in the end all business operations can be reduced to three words product, people and profit. So let us discuss about app monetiz monetization strategies. So here is a tree structure for monetization options in mobile applications. So you can see the basic uh, two options are first is free and second is paid. So if you go with a free model, uh, there, then you would, uh, you would end up with uh, uh, to monetize your apps through ads, advertisement. And it could be a native advertis advertisement or non-native ads. We would take a non-native ads uh, in detail in our next slides like ad network, house ads and ad mediation. Uh, but if in free there is a model called freemium model a freemium is in between free and paid and it is very popular nowadays if we go with freemium model there are two things one is feature and content you can sell like in app purchases in features you can sell is uh, sell it uh, like premium features or you can say uh, sell it like pay per use or token based in content uh, you can uh, give it to your users on premium subscriptions or pay per view so you can monetize your uh, app through freemium model uh, premium model like this if you go for the paid apps so user can directly purchase your app or the next process is in app purchases again the subscription transactions subscriptions end up with premium feature or premium subscription in transaction there are two categories called consumables and non consumables consumables again are uh, on the basis of paper use or paper view and non consumables are basis on paper upgrades So let's uh, discuss again the options for monetization. Uh, uh, as we discussed, the free app will give you money through ads and in initiation. You will not uh, the user will not give anything to you, but after that you will uh, monetize your app through ads. The second word is premium, pay per title, where you are selling your app to your users. The third one is trial, upgrade to premium. Yeah, the user is downloading your app on free, but when uh, uh, he or she upgrades this app, he will pay for your 
The uh, fourth one is premium, how we discuss it. It is it based on in-app items, in-app purchases, on uh, basis of features or contents. Uh, then the premium model, uh, it is combination of paper title plus in-app items means the user is uh, at first is buying your app and you are also saying uh, also selling some in-app purchases like content or features. And then the second last is trial premium. It is that you uh, first you are you, you are giving your uh, app for free to your users and after that uh, he will pay you uh, to upgrade it and then you are also selling in-app purchases in it. And the last one is subscription model where you are going uh, on through a uh, rental basis, you are charging your uh, user on every uh, month or year or time being. It's a auto recurrent payment basis. So here are some monetization tips or few suggestions from our end. Play by number, not by price, because higher price not always means higher revenue. Higher price could be low, uh, user, uh, user by transactions. So if you say that 100,000 users win uh, $1 transaction is better than 10,000 users with $10. Why? Because more users is means more viral effect, viral effect is means more transactions. So you should play on the numbers. You should look for the bigger mass instead of uh, looking for a small mass. And if you are having a paid app, so always have a free version of, uh, you know, like premium uh, for the users who don't want your, uh, you know, purchase your app at the first, but can purchase your content or features in future. And for ads, if you are monetizing your apps through ads, always track your eCPM revenue. Monetization ads glossary. Uh, the general terms used in monetization strategies. So the first is CPM, cost per mile. Here the advertiser will pay you for per thousand views for the ads. The second is cost per click. Here the advertiser will pay you for per click. Uh, the fill rate, what is the fill rate? Fill rate means number of displayed ads by number of views. If you are having a low fill rate, it means you have a good inventory uh, in your mobile application. So you can also put uh, various uh, you know, different ads to monetize your application. So you need to optimize your fill rate. The last one is CTR click through rate. It means number of clicks by number of views. So the higher the click rate is, better it is. So here are some ways uh, to monetize your app through ads. The first one is monetization through house ads. And the second one monetization through ad network and the last one is monetization through ad mediation let's take one by one monetization through house ads house ad, house ads means that you are promoting your own app your own app in uh, your portfolio in your current app or the upgrades of uh, the current app uh, let's uh, understand it by this i mean uh, this example uh, here is one xyz xyz publisher and he has one app uh, called xyz app okay and there is one abc ad agency the abc ad agency is doing advertisement for xyz publisher on its xyz app so now this xyz publisher needs to advertise any other app of his portfolio or upgrades for this xyz app into this current xyz app so what he will do he will put a request to this abc ad agency to put the ads his own ads into his own xyz app and the ABC ad agency will put uh, the ads from XYZ publishers to his XYZ app and now and on this basis it will uh, the ads will be showing to the users so this is the model uh, to make money out of that uh, so this is the basic model of house ads uh, so there are also some limitations for house ads so you must be having a good channel to advertisers and also you must be having uh, enough user base to attract the advertisers. If you are not having a good user base, uh, this model would not benefit you uh, to monetize your app. And now discuss uh, about uh, monetization through ad network. What is ad network? See, uh, the, all the ad networks uh, work on this basic principle. Here are in market uh, various advertisers, the people who have uh, made the apps, but now uh, they need to advertise their app to the user bases. So what uh, advertisers or the people uh, do, they request uh, to uh, add their mobile app to this ABC ad network. And the XYZ publisher is a partner of ABC or a publisher uh, is a partner of ABC ad network at, uh, at ABC ad network's platform. So what ABC ad network will do, it, uh, it will show the various different ads from the market on the application of XYZ publisher called XYZ apps. So the ABC network, ad network is uh, placing the ads to the XYZ, uh, XYZ apps and through that 
uh, the ads are going to the users so the money will flow from advertisers to uh, abc ad network abc ad network will uh, deduct some commissions or profits like something and it will uh, share the uh, remaining money to xyz publisher and also gives the various reports on day to day basis or weekly basis to the xyz publisher that how his uh, app is working or progressing so this is the basic concept for ad network let's uh, let us discuss about the ad mediation ad mediation is uh, you know recent concept into the, into the monetization market of mobile apps ad mediation enables you to connect with multiple ad networks through one simple integration for ad mediation there must be a ad platform and some companies uh, in the market providing such kind of ad platforms for ad mediation you can control your allocation or choice of network and by using multiple networks you can assess which are performing best and optimize accordingly to maximize fill rates and increase your revenue let us suppose uh, let us explain this uh, with this particular example suppose uh, 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 you must be aware with the company called admob admob is having a platform for ad mediation so what admob do admob calls uh, different ad networks like ad network b and ad, ne ad network c to its uh, ad mediation platform and uh, the uh, advertisers who will uh, who want to advertise their uh, mobile applications on admob uh, he will uh, admob will put these advertisers into this particular ad mediation platform so now the advertiser can choose the ad network um, uh, ad network b ad network c or admob any ad network or uh, it, uh, the advertisers can also request for all the ad networks so the advertisers is having a benefit to choose that networks and can reach to the mass of uh, reach to the masses Uh, so here what is the process how uh, ad mediation works first is register ad network first uh, advertiser need to register with ad network and that uh, ad mediation platform or the ad network which are having ad mediation platform it also register with another ad networks this uh, step 2 is set up all the ad networks at the mediation platform uh, like ad mob ad mob is setting uh, different uh, ad networks like ad network ad network b or ad, ne ad network c on its medi on its mediation platform now what they do they uh, allocate the traffic uh, they do uh, backfill priorities uh, testing for these particular integrations and uh, uh, you know final result will come to the boost of the monetization for advertisers and increase ctr and ecpm so this is the basic model that how ad mediation is working in present scenario so here is the slide uh, which show you uh, the top app marketers and advertisers and you can also see a comparison in, in between so the comparison is based on the platforms that what platforms they are working on uh, which kind of uh, model they are offering like cpc cost per click or uh, cpm cost per mile cpa cost per action cpa cost per impression so here we have uh, we got five companies like admob m media adphonic chart boost and tapchart and you can find many more companies uh, for these kind of services uh, the, here is also we, uh, the, we have also shown the supported ad format Uh, in which at format they are working are they providing the services of mediation or not or they are working on house ads or not so you can get a uh, you know a quick uh, comparison for these uh, ad uh, ad networks or ad marketers <coughs> uh so besides developing great apps open excel techno labs is also providing marketing and monetization services to our clients uh and you can also find uh, different of uh, other app market and uh, marketer and advertisers on the below link so uh thanks for hearing us uh, patiently from a, uh, for a long time you know i hope that you know uh, our presentation has added some knowledge uh, regarding uh, uh, android app marketing uh, development and monetization uh, uh, to you uh, uh, me and avik are here always uh, to help you if you have any questions you can uh, put on the right side of uh, your screen on the tab so we can answer all of your questions Uh, we will share your uh, we will share the slides uh, and the uh, video uh, in a different mail so you will be getting the slides and uh, the video within a week okay so there are no no more questions so now we will end up with the presentation thanks uh, thanks a lot uh, to you all for being so patient thank you